ברוך אתה דושם אלוקינו מלך העולם אשר ברא ששון ושמחה חתן וחלום גילה רינה דיצה וחדווה אהבה ואחווה ושלום ורעות. מוזיקל טרדישנס אין ג'ודיאזם הם קווייט ריץ' הם משתמשים with the times, at time, they're still changing. Um, I am only the sixth cantor in the history of Congregation Emmanuel, for which I'm very, very proud. And we have a rich tradition at our congregation of commissioning new works for the synagogue. The Bloch Sacred Service is a magnificent masterpiece that was commissioned back in the 1930s by my predecessor, Reuben Rinder. The cantor is the person who leads the worship in song. And uh, each congregation will be reflective of its cantor if they have a cantor. Not every congregation does. The music at weddings is generally whatever the couple requests. Sometimes you sing a modern song. But most of the time they request traditional music, in, in, Hebrew songs, which uh, most of the texts are taken from the Song of Songs. There's some lovely melodies, very well known. and uh, they're used for processionals. Recessional music is a little more upbeat. There was a lot of music in the ancient temple cult. But once the temple was destroyed, it is felt that the Jewish people went into mourning, and so instruments were not allowed. With the advent of Reform Judaism, which started to reflect more a Protestant worship experience of, of readings and sermon and, and choral music, The organ came back into mode in, in the synagogue. Um, instruments are now employed a lot in the synagogue. Very often you'll go into a, a, a service and there'll be a guitar. Um, the music sometimes a little more folky nowadays than formal. I have a wonderful organist at Congregation Emmanuel and he uh, has a full spectrum of wedding music from classical to very Jewish tunes and he will He will offer that to a couple and have them choose. If I were advising, I would say whatever music the couple likes the best, uh, they should have it played when the guests are being seated. This past weekend, I did a wedding where the processional music was all Beatles tunes. And actually, I was, it was very refreshing. I was actually standing under the chuppah and bopping and singing, you know, all you need is love. I was having a very nice time. But traditionally, you would sing, Erev Shel Shoshani, you know, or Dodi Li Va'ani Loha. There are tunes that are sung with uh, romance poetry and, and song of songs poetry that are used most of the time. Uh, we do use that. There are some people who may think Mendelssohn is inappropriate, but Mendelssohn was the grandson of a very famous Jew, Moses Mendelssohn, and frankly, even though uh, Felix Mendelssohn's father converted out of the faith, uh, there are some who believe that uh, Felix Mendelssohn really was uh, returning to the faith in many ways, and so to play uh, Midsummer's Night's Dream uh, at the end of a ceremony is not a problem for me. And I will say also, as far as instruments, uh, besides the organ, or a keyboard. Um, I've seen every combination. There's been harp, there's been string quartets, there have been trios, there's been a guitar and a flute and a violin. Uh, but the most beautiful experience I think I had, really, was with the San Francisco Saxophone Quartet. In our synagogue, I must say, four saxophones was just the bee's knees. It was the most beautiful sound. What I would say is be sensitive to the space. And when you have one little instrument or two little instruments, it doesn't always make an impact. Have a test, have a sound check before the wedding. Um, make sure that you know, everyone is properly mic'd and amplified. And also in any space, I would say make sure that everyone can be heard. I like to advise couples that when the bride is walking down the aisle, uh, they choose a very pretty, Uh, Hebrew melody and, and the one I like to sing is called Iti Milvanon which is really quite lovely very sweet and uh, very feminine melody for the bride coming down. 
There are also two cantorial organizations in the United States, the American Conference of Cantors and the Cantors Assembly, which is the Conservative Union of Cantors. If you call their offices, they can always refer you to a cantor who can advise you. Some couples will choose a venue based on the venue. So Emmanuel is quite grand and beautiful. Some couples will choose to come to Emmanuel, but they'll bring their own family rabbi. And that's, as long as the rabbi asks permission from our clergy, we're fine. Our hall can be rented. You do not have to get married in the congregation you grew up in, but many brides will choose to do that. Some grooms will choose to do that. Uh, if they have a relationship with a clergy person, they will very often ask that person to officiate. So as an example, of uh, the wedding blessings in a Jewish ceremony. I, um, I'm very happy to chant the seventh wedding blessing, which is the most extensive and the most joyful. Usually we improvise this in a major key. I'll be using some quotes from uh, a cantorial version by Cantor Israel Alter. But this is what you might hear as the seventh wedding blessing. Baruch atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Asher Baruch Sasson V'Simcha Chatan V'Chalo Gila Rina Ditsa V'Chedva Ahava V'Achava V'Shalom Adonai Eloheinu, Hishama Be'arei Yehuda Uvechutzot Yerushalayim, Kol Sason Vekol Simcha, Kol Chatan Vekol Kala, Kol Mitzalot Chatanim Mechupatam Unearim Mimishte Neginatam, Baruch Atam, And we all say, Amen.